So I thank you for freedom in this place, God. I thank you that we can step into a non-judgmental environment. I thank you that we can step into a non-judgmental atmosphere. I thank you, Father, that your glory dwells here. Lord, I do not take lightly that you've given me the opportunity to be able to speak into the hearts and minds of your people. And as I stand before them today, Father, I decrease so that you can increase. Speak directly into the hearts and minds of each and every last one of us. Shift our lives, God. Give us a different perspective and a different outlook by the time we leave this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, your word declares in Psalms 133, verse 1, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. So we thank you for a unified body this morning. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for it in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Before you sit down, I want you to look at a few people around you and tell them consistency is key. Consistency, consistency is, is key. key. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all can be seated. Stay with it. Baby, y'all can go. Children, y'all can go. Children, y'all can go. Hallelujah. Consistency. Consistency. Consistency is key. Hallelujah. Raise your hand if you know you need to get consistent in some areas of your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen to me. I was doing some, some mathematical equations, and we are day 55. Excuse me, there, there are 55 more days left in 2022. Right. 55 more days left in, in 2020. We have, we have already made it to 310 days. There are 365 days in a year, you guys. Right, right. And we've made it to 310 days. There are 55 more days left. And can you really tell yourself that you've been consistent? Can you really and truly sit here and tell yourself that you read your Bible every day out of those 310? <laughs> Can you sit here and tell yourself that you prayed to the Father uh, every single day out of the 310? See, he was checking me on this. He was checking me on this. Because if I'm a believer, that's the first thing that I'm going I'm to get checked on. I'm going to get checked on my walk. Yeah. I'm going to get checked on my fruit. The Bible says that you will know them by their what, you guys? By their fruit. Matthew 7, verse 16. It never says you'll know them by a mistake they made. Yes, you may have made a mistake, but you, keep, you pick yourself up and you keep moving. Touch your neighbor and say, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 5, verse 3, he said, listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. Oh, I love this. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning, I bring my request to you and wait expectingly. Anytime you approach the Father, you have to have a spirit of expectation. Amen. But David said, listen to my voice in the morning. Watch this. I wrote something down. I wrote, I wrote, I wrote something down. I wrote something down. The secret of failure or success lies in your daily routine. Let me say that one more time. The secret of, of failure or success lies in your daily routine. David said, listen to my voice in the morning. What is the first thing you do when you get up in the morning time? Because the first thing that you do when you get up in the morning time is going to set the precedent for the rest of that day. It's going to set the precedent for the rest of that day. David said in Psalms 119, verse 164, seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. Everybody say, I got to get on my job. <laughs> he says, seven times a day, I praise you for your righteous laws. We are living in a society where we're consistently inconsistent. We're living in a society where we're consistently inconsistent. We'll, we'll, we'll start off with short bursts of faith, and then before you know it, before you know it, I found myself. A day turns into a week. A week turns into a month. And then before you know it, an entire year has went by. And I hadn't even picked my word up. And I say that I'm a believer. Consistently and consistent. See, this is why there's a difference between setting goals and having resolutions. And there's a lot of individuals that set these New Year's re resolutions. Raise your hand if you've been one of them before. Yeah, we all have. I'm going to be fine in 2009. <laughs> Y'all got all of the little things that come with it. Y'all got everything that come with it. 
I'm going to shine in 2025, all this little different stuff. You do all of these little different things, but you don't stick to the script. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Everybody say consistency is key. Consistency. Consistency. Consistency is key. Now, it's always good for you to set goals as a believer. As a believer, you have to have short-term goals, mid-term goals, and long-term goals. What is a goal? A goal is an ambition. It's an aim, a strong desire to achieve or accomplish something. Because if you don't set a goal for yourself, what it end up happening is you'll be running aimlessly. Everybody say aimlessly. aimlessly. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11. Let's go there in the message translation. Help me out. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11, and let's go there in the message translation. Watch this. Hallelujah. 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 Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11, in the message translation. Doom. Everybody say doom. Doom, doom is destruction. Not just yet. Doom is, 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 is destruction. Doom to those who get up early and start drinking booze before breakfast. <laughs> who stay up all hours of the night drinking themselves into a storm. Everybody say no aim. No aim. That's no consistency. There's no consistency here. Watch this. He said, do them to those who get up early in the morning. And I told you, I told you that whatever you do early in the morning is going to set the precedent for your day. He said, who get up early and start drinking booze before breakfast, who stay up all hours of the night drinking themselves into a stupor. What is a stupor? You drinking yourself into a coma. You drinking yourself into a stupor to where you can't even function the right way. Now, I did a little study, you guys, and watch this. There are four different types of drinkers. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody say consistency. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The first type of drinker is an enhancement drinker. An enhancement drinker because it's exciting for them. It caters to their senses. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, don't let the excitement of your youth cause you to forget your creator. Yes, yes. Honor him in your youth before you grow old and no longer enjoy living. This is an, in, 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 this is an excitement that takes place with this individual. They drink it because they know they want to get drunk. Yeah, yeah. I'm finna pull up. Don't nobody tell me nothing because it's going down. I done had a hard day. <laughs> <laughs> and this, and, and, and this, is, this is justifiable to them. They're not consistent, but they're being consistently inconsistent. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Yes. They're being consistently inconsistent. This is the individual that, that it caters to their physical five senses, what they can see, touch, taste, smell, and hear. Is this making sense to y'all so far? No. The second one is a drinker who is drinking just to cope. This is the coper. This is the coper. This is the coper. They're drinking to forget about their worries. They're doing this to drown out their sorrows. Uh, uh, they're doing this to drown out their sorrows. They're worrying all the time. Now, I told y'all there's a difference between worry and concern. Worrying means that the situation has control over me. Concern means I have the control over the situation. Right, right, right. Worrying, worrying is completely different. The Bible says don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Amen. Philippians 4, verse 6. Amen. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes. This is the person who's trying to who's trying to cope with life. The person who's trying to cope with life. Everybody say number three. Number three. Number three, number three, number three. Number three. This is the person, watch this. They're drinking, and this is their name. This is the, this is the conformist. <laughs> they're conforming. They're conforming because they're only drinking just to fit in. Oh my God, raise your hand if you've ever been around individuals like that. Raise your hand if you've ever been that individual. They're drinking just to fit in. And the Bible says, watch this, in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 6, verse 17, come out from amongst them and be separate, says the Lord. Amen. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. Amen. Now, wait, 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 wait. Let me unpack that real quick. It says, come out from amongst them and be what, you guys? Separate. separate. Touch no unclean thing. And I will do what? I'll receive you. So that means that if I'm engaging in these things, the Father hadn't received me. Amen. There are certain things that the Father won't receive. The Bible says that his eyes are too pure to look upon evil. He cannot tolerate wrongdoing in Habakkuk 1 verse 13. Hey, is this making sense to y'all this morning? 
If you want to be received by the Father, there's some things that you're going to have to cut off. Amen. Say that. If you want to be received by the Father, there are some things that you need to sideswipe because you want your destiny over wanting self-gratification. Come out from amongst them and be separate. So the Lord says, no unclean thing and I, I will receive you. Now this next one, everybody say this next one. Y'all have to watch out for this next one because this individual right here is the social drinker. This is the social individual. Watch this. They drink to celebrate. They in the party. They in the clubbing. This is your social butterfly. They out here. Oh, they out here. You got to watch it. Everybody say they out here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah watch this. Go to, go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1 in the King James Version. Go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1 in the King James Version. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy, boy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Everybody say consistency is key. Consistency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. Wine is. Uh-oh, that gives it an identity, doesn't it? Uh-oh. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. One translation says that it's a brawler. What is a brawler? Right. <laughs> and whoever is deceived therein or thereby is not what? Wise. Wine is a marker, strong drink is a brawl, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Everybody say BC. BC, 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 before I was, before I was, I ain't gonna say before Caleb, because it was before Caleb. BC, before Christ. Before Christ, before Christ and before Caleb, hallelujah. We used to go to the club and, 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 and one of these little songs used to play when we was in the club. And we went in there, we, was a so, we were social drinkers. We were social drinkers, so when we was in there, huh, we, as, soon as, as soon as that goose gets you loose. <laughs> Birds chirp when they're supposed to. But the only thing that's inconsistent 
is humans. We're the only ones who won't do what the Father tells them to do. And that is sad. And how do I know if I love the Father or not? The Bible says in John 14, verse 15, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Amen. And am I really and truly obeying the Father the way that I'm supposed to? The Father was consistent, and he didn't rush. He did everything one day at a time. At a time. One day at a time. Go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. You can take that back to the NIV if you want to. Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all getting something so far? Amen. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning, the what, you guys? First the first day. The first day. Go to Genesis chapter 5. Uh, Genesis, stay in there right there. Genesis chapter 1 still. Go to verse 8. Go to verse 8. Go to verse 8. Hallelujah. Go to verse 8. God, I love your word. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the what, you guys? Hey, 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 hey. Go to verse, uh, uh, go to verse uh, 13. Go to verse 13. Go to verse 13. And there was evening, and there was morning, the what? The third day. Are y'all follow me? Yeah. Let's go to verse 19. Go to verse 19. I think it's going to say something different, Gerald. <laughs> verse 19. God called the expanse sky, and there was... Uh-oh, uh-oh, 19, 19, 19, 19. How are going to say? I'm like, boy, he ain't made two skies? <laughs> Lord, let me be in that number. And there was evening, and there was morning. The what, you guys? Hey, let's go to verse 23. Let's go to verse 23. <laughs> Are we walking through the word this morning, you guys? Thank you, Lord. Verse 23, verse 23, verse 23, verse 23. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Verse 23. And there was evening, and there was morning. The what, you guys? Now, wait a minute. Let's go to verse 31. Go to verse 31. Go to verse 31. <laughs> Everybody said, read your Bible. Read your That's Bible. That's all you got to do. Just read it. Just read it. Just read it. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning. The what, you guys? Six, go to verse 2. Go to verse 2. Go to, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to Genesis chapter 2. Start at verse 1. Oh, my God. I love this. Stuff. I love this, Lord. I love this. Genesis chapter 2. Start at verse 1. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The man and his wife, uh oh, Genesis 2. Genesis, you went all the way up, girl. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> went on real quick. I ain't have no warmers on. I had to send them to Tavi so she can fashion them up. <laughs> Thus the heavens and the earth were complete, and all, they were what, you guys? Completed. They were completed in all their vast array. Now go to the next verse. By the seventh, what? Day. God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he did what? He rested, he rested from all his work. He rested from all his work. That's one through seven. He worked six days, and on the seventh day, what did he do? He rested. God was consistent. He did everything one day at a time. At a time. Amen. Let your neighbor tell him, stop rushing so much. Stop it's going to get, get handled. He's going to take care of it. He's going to do exactly what he said he was going to do because the Bible says I watch over my word to perform it in, Gen yeah. in, in uh, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. He said I watch over my word to perform it. If God is consistent and we're created in his image and in his, his likeness according to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, then we should be doing the same exact thing. Our mind frame, let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. We should be doing the same exact thing as the Father. We should be carrying ourselves the same exact way as the Father. Amen. We should not get ahead of him or we should not go behind him. We should keep in step with him. Yeah. Did this make it sense to y'all this morning? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we got uh, I just have to face the fact that my son he, 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 he might not, he, he may now, he may, he may, whatever he wants to do, I'm going to get behind him and I'm going to home that. I'm going to, I'm going to cultivate that. But as of right now, everybody say that as of right now. As of right now, I think my son would be a cowboy. 
As of right now, I think he 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 into these John Deere's, man. He, he I don't know what Gerald did to him, man. He, as, of, as of right now, this is what he wants to do. So we end up buying him a John Deere tractor. We end up buying him a John Deere tractor. What about a, about a couple years ago? Years ago? Uh, uh, and, and, and what ended up happening with this John Deere tractor? Uh, the first day, everybody say the first day. The first day, Caleb gets in his tractor. He said, Dad. He said, yeah, son. He said, he said seatbelt. All right, well, I'm looking for the seatbelt. The whole thing, it's got it's a whole little setup. It got the radio on it and everything. So I get the seatbelt, and I help put it on. So I'm like, all right, son. I said, let's go. He said, Dad, wait, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. He put his head down. He said, in Jesus' name, amen. And then he took off. <laughs> he prayed before he drove off. He put his seatbelt on before he drove off. Now, I sit back and I thought about something. I said, man, you know what? The only reason why Caleb did that is because it's learned behavior. Amen. The only reason why Caleb did that is because he knows that we're not going to get in the vehicle without him seeing somebody putting their seatbelt on and without us praying before we take off. And he did the same exact thing when he got inside of his vehicle. See, your children are watching you. And not just your children. There's people that are around you that's watching you and you don't even realize it. There's more eyes on you than you know. Everybody say prove it. I can prove it to you because you can post a video on social media. That thing will have a thousand views but only six likes. Oh, yeah. They're they watching you. They're watching you. They're watching you more than you think they are. Eyes are on you. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. 1 Peter 3 verse 12. God, I love your word. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say they're watching they watching, they watching, they watching, they watching, they watching, they watching, and watch this. I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. 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 Why do we read the book of Proverbs? It says in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 4, these Proverbs make the simple-minded clever. Yep. <laughs> These Proverbs make the simple-minded clever. Proverbs is the book of wisdom. If you want your understanding to be open, if you want the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened, it's really, really good that you delve into the book of Proverbs. It's really, really good for you. Really good for you. Watch this. Wisdom is what? Supreme. Supreme, meaning it's the chief thing. Therefore, get what? Wisdom. That's say get money. Uh-uh. 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 That's how you say get money. Get this bag. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now watch this. Now watch this. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. In the body of Christ, in the body of Christ, we become too conformed to the world. We don't understand things like relax. We don't understand things like be still and know that he's God. Wow. We're so focused on I got to grind, 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 grind until I get it. Yeah. I got to go hard for what's mine. I got to, I got to, I got to press. I got to toil until I can't toil anymore. But the Bible says the complete opposite. That my labor in the Lord is not in vain. Yes. Not my labor at a job. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. My labor in the Lord. I have to, when I'm laboring in the Lord, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. When I'm laboring in the Lord, I'm laboring in his word. And when I get in his word, I experience the benefits from his word. Yeah. All I have to do is seek ye first. first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to me, Matthew 6, verse 33. Not focusing so much on going out there trying to get a bag and focusing so much on trying to get this and get that and get that. All I have to do is stay in proper alignment with the Father and blessings going to follow me, goodness and mercy. <laughs> She'll follow me all the days of my life. Does this make sense to y'all? Wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though... It what, you guys? Cost. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Raise your hand if you can comprehend whenever I preach the message. When the word goes forth, you can comprehend it. You can understand it because I'm able to break it down in the modern day vernacular that you understand. Amen. But did you know that there was a season in my life where this gospel was veiled to me? There was a season in my life where this gospel was veiled to me and I did not know what was being said. And I'm lit it's literally like I was looking at it like this. Like, Lord, what in the world is going on here? I was ridiculed. I was talked about. 
But I knew that the hand of God was on me, so what I had to do is I had to push back from worldly situations, and I had to get to a consecrated place so that the Father could cleanse and purify me from all unrighteousness so that my eyes could be enlightened. But it didn't happen overnight, you guys. It was a situation to where scars had to come with it. I walked through seasons and seasons and seasons of not knowing anything when it came to this word. And it was very, very frustrating. People point fingers at you and telling you you crazy. <laughs> and I had to really, really get to the word to where it says that it's a, it's a time to be silent. It's a time to speak up. Oh, come on, now. Come on, now. They'll talk about you enough. You'll start being quiet. Yes. We're always sharing everything with people. <laughs> Don't cast your pearls to swine. Matthew 7, verse 6. Why? Because what they're going to do is they're going to trample it under their feet. They don't know. They don't know what. They don't know the pearl. They don't know the word of, of great value that the Father has placed on the inside of you. That's why you have to carry that. You have to cherish that until the per, until the Father tells you when to release it. Because you can say the right thing at the wrong time. Oh man, is this making sense to y'all? All right, y'all better not have me work so hard at that now. Wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom, though it costs all you have. Get, get, get understanding, get, get understanding. Everybody say consistency is key. Consistency, consistency is key. That was an a older lady, man, beautiful, beautiful soul. Fragile young lady, man, very beautiful. She never, she never attended a service before. And she came when I was performing, I was performing a wedding. She ended up coming and she came up to me. And you know, I was dressed, dressed pretty nice. And she came up to me and she said, she said, where's your towel? I said, huh? She said, the towel, the towel that you wear when you're on Facebook. <laughs> I said, no, wait a minute, hold on. No, well, you been watching, you Lord, yeah. I said, you watch me? She said, yeah, man. She said, now, where's your towel? She said, I came in here to see the towel. <laughs> I said, you, you came to see the towel. And, and then she said, now, why do you wear the towel? I said, for one, man, because I sweat. <laughs> I said, but not only that, this is a reminder that I had a towel before I had a title. Come on, now. Yeah. I had a towel in my hand before I had a title. And you got a lot of people that's chasing after titles without picking up the towel. Yeah. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark 10, Amen. verse 45. Amen. Is this making sense to y'all? Amen. So every time I pick this thing up, yeah, I'm wiping sweat, Lord Jesus. But I'm also reminded, I'm also reminded that this is nothing more than another level of servitude. Yes. That's all it is. I'm just serving my way. And each and every last one of you have to serve your way to what the Father has for you. If he tells you to greet, you better greet with all your might. If he tells you to pray, you better pray with all your might. If he tells you to go fast, you better fast with all your might. If he tells you to give, you better give with a cheerful heart. Do it. Everybody say, just do it. Just do it. God, I bless you. God, I bless you. God, I bless you. Is this word blessing y'all so far? Everybody say consistency is key. Consistency. Consistency is key. There was um, I want you to go to uh, I want you to Matthew chapter six, Matthew chapter six, Matthew chapter six. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter six. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. When you find yourself in a season to where you've been consistent, because it's not about your gifts and it's not about your talent, your consistency will get you places. It will take you places that you wouldn't even have imagined because the Father can trust you. He's no respecter of persons, according to Romans 2, verse 11. He's not a respecter of persons, but watch this. He does honor obedience. Amen. He honors obedience and he honors consistency. Now, when you step foot, when you step foot into the purpose and the promise of what the Father has called you to, there's going to be a lot of people that started with you. <coughs> And just because they started with you, you cannot get what you call survival's remorse. Oh, man, I gotta teach y'all this. <laughs> you cannot get what you cannot get what you call survival's grief. Watch this. Everybody say, give me the definition. Me the, definition. the survival syndrome is when a person believes they have done something wrong by surviving a, tra a traumatic event when others didn't. Mm -hmm. It's self-guilt. I feel bad because I've left the pack. I feel bad because the Father has elevated me. 
And all you're doing is picking up on what's on the inside of another individual. You gotta, you gotta separate yourself. <laughs> Your consistency is gonna separate you. Your consistency is gonna take you to higher heights. Your consistency is gonna take you to deeper depths. But you can't fold, you can't draw back. The Father says, come out from amongst them. Is this making sense to y'all? That was for somebody. I had to bring that out. I had to bring that out. Go to verse 11. Go to verse 11. Go to verse 11. Everybody say consistency. Consistency. Uh, is this blessing y'all? Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. Give us when, you guys? Today. Our what? Daily bread. Okay, okay, okay. He didn't say give us tomorrow. He didn't say you gave it yesterday. He said give us today. Today. Yes. today. That's present tense. Yes. Give us today our daily bread. Yes. Because what happens is this bread is going to be fresh on a daily basis. It's the manna according to uh, Exodus 16. It's the manna that was rained down on a daily basis. Now watch this. If you don't Grab the hold to this daily bread. It'll become stale. Amen. Don't try to live. Don't try to live today off of what he spoke yesterday. Amen. Don't try to live today off of what he spoke a year ago. Yeah. He's speaking. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Now, this is one thing that you have to understand about prophecy. And this is another thing that you have to understand about the word of the Lord. He will not speak anything new to you until you've carried out the previous thing that he told you to do. Stop always looking for another word. Lord, I need a word. I need you to give me this. I need you to give me that. He'll never speak until you're being obedient to what he spoke to you last. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus. I told you to clean that room. Clean that room up. Go on, clean it up. Clean the room. Clean the room. Mom, can I go to the store? No, you got to go clean that room. Mom, can I go to the football game? No, I told you to clean the room. Stop asking for other things. If you hadn't done what he told you to do previously. Wow, wow, wow. Jesus. Is this making sense to you? Amen. Only a good parent. <laughs> Only a good parent. Only a good parent. The Bible says that the Lord disciplines those he loves. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. Now the discipline that it's talking about, discipline is not punishment for your past, it's training for your future. Yes. Stop always thinking that the Father is chastising you with an iron rod. That's not him. It's not punishment for your past. It's training for your future. Amen. That's what discipline is. Amen. Is this making sense to y'all? Hallelujah. Give us today our, our daily our daily bread. Our, our daily bread. I was looking at an interview, you guys. And, and I was kind of disturbed. I was, I'm not going to lie. I was, I was kind of disturbed. I, I like you know interviews and things like that because I try to equate it to some spiritual, from a spiritual connotation. They ended up catching a predator, a child predator. And... When they caught this guy, they interviewed him. And he told them that he would be honest with him. He'll let them know his tactics. He'll let them know. He said, one thing that I look for, he said, I look for, he said, I look for a child who doesn't have a father in their life consistently. I look for a child, I look for a child where I know that, that there's no man there because that would be a threat. If there's a woman who just let that child go, he said, that's who I'm targeting. I'm going after that child. I'm going after I'm going after I'm going after the child that has no head figure there. <laughs> no male figure there. And it kind of hit me in my heart that we have people who show up from time to time in our lives. Even from a young age, you can't let me tell you something, you can't outsource your child. You can't buy a child. And we live in a society to where the more and more you give me, the more and more you love me. There was a story. Hallelujah. Everybody say true story. true story. There was a story about this guy and his son. And what ended up happening was this guy, this guy's son was so excited uh, every day that his father came home. And what ended up happening was he asked his dad, he said, Dad, can, can, you, can, you, play, can you play ball with me? And, uh, and the son and, and the dad said, well, yeah, son, but not today. Maybe, maybe next week because I'm, I'm going on a business trip. So, so, so the... The, the, the little boy was like, okay, all right, Dad, all right. So, so the dad ends up going on his business trip, and he came back, and he's like, Dad, you're back. You're here. He said, Ken, you, you promised me that we was going to go outside and we are going to throw the ball. And, and the dad was like, well, son, 
Son, I got some more business. I, I, I got some more business that I have to attend to. So maybe, maybe a few days from now, a few days come, and the same scenario plays out. So one day, the child comes home from school, and he walks up to his dad's office, and he said, Dad, how much, how much do you make an hour? Hmm. And he says, son, why would, you, why would you ask me that? Why would you ask me that right now? I, I, I just want to know, I, I, I just want to know why would you ask me? You see me up here working, son. The little boy said, Dad, I'm sorry. So he goes, he goes to, goes, goes, goes to his, his room, gets ready for bed. And his dad is getting dealt with. He said, he said I wonder why he would ask me something like that. So he walks to the son's room. And as soon as he walks to his son's room, he, he says, son, I don't know why you would ask me how much I make an hour, but, but if you must know, I make, I make $25 an hour. And the little boy gets out of bed. He runs to his piggy bank. He said, dad, can I please have $20? Can I have, can I have $20, dad, please, please? He was like, son, what do you want? You want a game or something? He said, all right, here's your 20. Here's your 20. So the next day, the little boy goes to school. He, he's excited. He comes home, and he rushes straight to his piggy bank. He, he gets the $25. He runs to his dad's office, and he said, Dad, here's $25. Can I have an hour of your time? Jesus. Can I buy an hour, an hour of your time? See, it's not about the materialistic wealth. See, the Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the world? Lose his soul. In Mark 8, verse 36. See, it makes so much more of a difference when you take time out with an individual. Because you're full, you're molding them, you're grafting them, and you're impressing the word of God upon them so that they can grow and mature and evolve into who the Father has called them to be. Does this make sense to y'all this morning? Amen. Everybody say consistency is key. Consistency is key. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can y'all handle a little bit more? Yeah, yeah y'all are pulling. Y'all are pulling. Y'all are pulling. Y'all are pulling. Watch this. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Study. Everybody say study. study. I just read. Study this book of law continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be sure to obey all that is written in it. Only then will you succeed. See, we think success. We think success comes from having a nice car or the nice job or the nice house. Success in the eyes of God is someone who gets this on the inside of them and walks it out on a daily basis. I, they can have a bank account full of money. But as long as I'm rich in word, because that's what's going to carry me through in the midst of these hardships and difficulties that I'm going through. Is that making sense to y'all? The Bible says that the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's eyes. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. First Corinthians 3 verse 19. So it is not about all of these external things. You make sure that you get this word on the inside of you. The Bible says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Not, not just dwell in you. It said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in Colossians 3.16. Oh, yes. <laughs> Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Study this book of law continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be sure to obey all that is written in it. Only then will you succeed. <coughs> That's true success. Yes. True success is following out what the Father has set in place for my life in this earth world. Yes. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes. Are y'all being blessed by this word so far? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I was, um, there, there, there's a, there's a young lady by the name of Lolo Jones. Everybody say Lola Jones. Lola Jones. Lola Jones. Lola Jones. Lola Jones. She is 40 years old. She is 40 years old, and this woman is an Olympic bobsledder, and she's an Olympic hurdler. Now, you have to understand, she's in a place of her life. She's in a place of her life where she has the money. Everything is good. She's not focused on that. But what she was brought up with, she was brought up with Christian morals and Christian values. And at 40 years old, she walks around as a virgin. And she said she's getting so much ridicule because of her consistency. She's getting so much ridicule because of, because of the society and what people are saying. Well, you, it, don't, it don't take all of that. Raise your hand if you ever heard somebody tell you that. 
Amen. Amen. Hey, don't take all that. You ain't got to do that. You, you better go out there and do what you got to do. And she said that it's literally have diminished her dating life. No one wants to come towards her. They see her as a cancer because she's living a life of purity. Wow. Jesus. 40 years old and she's protecting herself. That's a gem. That's a diamond. You better cherish that. And what people don't understand is that we live in that same type of society. Listen to me. The Bible says in Psalms of Psalms, chapter 3, verse 4, I found the one my soul loves. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 It said, I found the one my soul loves. It never said, I found the one that my flesh wants. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's good. It said, I found the one my soul. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. Psalms of Psalms 6, verse 3. You better know your worth, and you better know your value. Because at the end of the day, when the father brings that person to you, when he brings that man, when he brings that woman, it'll be a mess made in heaven and not hell on earth. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? I want y'all to praise God if y'all got something from that word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Everybody standing with me if you possibly can. Let's, let's pray for social media. Father, in Jesus' name, I just speak life over each and every person that's under the sound of my voice. I thank you for the fire of the Holy Spirit that burns away all inconsistencies, God. May your people walk worthy of the calling with which they were called according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. And those who don't know you, Father, we just believe by faith that they come into the absolute fullness of who you are. Your word says in 1 Timothy 2, verse 4, that it's God's will that all men be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. So we bless you and we thank you for your faithfulness that you're touching hearts, that you're touching minds, and that there is a release that takes place from off of their lives, not to conform to the, to the, the patterns of this world, Father, but to be transformed by the renewing of their mind. We bless you for it, God. And we honor you for being the faithful Father that you are, and I send angels to encamp around about them, and may they feel your tangible presence every step that they take in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all praise God here. Praise God. Praise God.